Well, we want to welcome you guys to another episode of Let's Talk with Bro. And I know you guys caught the flyer. You know, tonight we're going to be discussing blended families. And you guys know all of the ups and downs that come with having blended families, all the drama, all the love, all the joy that can come from it. But tonight, I want to introduce you first and foremost to my guest. I want to thank you so much, Steve, for coming on. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, y'all. I'm Steve. Uh, my wife is Angel. We have a family blended of six, six and a possible, we call it with spades, um, <laughs> you know, because some people like to jump in and jump out and whatever. But between the two of us, uh, we have a family of six, Angel and I being eight. Okay, that's good. Now, I know that you wrote a book. Tell us a little bit about your book. All right. So uh, my wife was the author and I'm kind of a bit of the push of the book and I'm iterating in the second uh, portion of the book. The book is Love Endures All, The Journey. What it does is it captures a lot of things that happened within the relationship, her previous marriage, how it went from uh, violent and toxic, um, violent and toxic, and how we ended up coming back together. Wow. Initially, we were high school sweethearts. Well, I was in high school. She was in junior college. I thought I was the dude uh, until she <laughs> dropped me. And, you know, years later, uh, I joined the military and eventually we got back together. And here we are in the double digits of marriage, uh, pushing our way on through. Wow. Now, you know, I commend that anybody making it into the double digits of marriage off the bat, get respect for me. Listen. So, you know, we don't waste any time hopping right into the questions around here. So, you know, when I think about blended families, you know, normally when I see a blended family, it is always some kind of drama. And I mean, like to the third degree drama, Yeah. you know, so when you met your wife, did she already have children? So when I first met my wife, she had one child. She was like 18 months old and my wife wasn't the typical. She wasn't the typical chick back then. Right. No diaper bags. The, the baby had a, uh, a diaper bag on her back, had all the pampers in it because my wife wanted to be cute. <laughs> That's hilarious. It is. So it didn't bother you to date a woman that had a child. At that point, no, absolutely. Because I was in love, right? I saw her, she was wearing, you know, a red shirt, blue Tommy Hill figure jeans and red shoes. Like I remember uh, instantly what that was and we connected and, and bonded for a little bit. Oh, that's good. That's good. So I know you said that you guys, you know, I like to hear about the issues. Come we know what's me. right, but we want to know about the hiccups. So you meet this woman, you guys are young, she's mm -hmm. 18 years old, and you guys, you know, was she in love? She was and wasn't. So, and that was the thing, right? Um, we, our relationship did what our, what relationships do, right? When you're young, it grows and blossoms. And then at some point we finally get to this age thing, right? I was 16, or I was 16, she was 19. And she was oh. like, uh-uh. Nah, we can't do this. Like, wait a second, hold on. Like, it, it's been great for the last eight months. Like, what, what we, what, what we gonna do? You didn't mention your age for the first eight months. Like, what, what, for what? I asked questions oh. that was. I answer questions that were asked. It wasn't voluntary information. We didn't do. She didn't ask. I didn't tell. I get it. And did you not tell because you knew she was gonna respond like that? Oh no. You know, it, it was it was dope. You know, one having an older woman. Uh, two, I like mature and older. So, and she, it's only three years. So don't, you know, don't get it twisted. It ain't that much, but I, I like it. That was, that was great. And it was good for me. But during that time, those two years made a big difference because she was legal. Right. And you were, I you mean, know what I mean? So, thinking about that from, from an adult <laughs> standpoint. Yeah. But yeah you didn't thinking, care. I wasn't thinking about that. I'm thinking, okay. So fast forward. Uh -huh. Okay. So you guys are dating, you know, clearly your relationship progressed. Yes. You know, so how long were you guys together before you started considering marrying her? Um, great question. I can't even tell you. I know that. I ended up doing the uh, finishing out high school. I graduated early and joined the Navy, right? Okay. We're both from Chicago. 
And well, it's rough in Chicago. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I didn't know you was from Chicago. I don't know yeah. how I missed that. Listen, so we were doing what we needed to do. Uh, I came back and, you know, makeshift proposal. It wasn't nothing big, but it was like, listen, uh, I'm going to Japan. I can take you and your daughter with me. We could just, we could figure this thing out if that's what you want to do. Um, and at that moment, right, this is 2002. Hey, let's, let's make it work. It's me, you, her, got a little three piece. We can make it happen. And she really wasn't for it. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. You know, most women would have been like, yes, I'm out of here. Why do you think she was hesitant on going with you? So a part of it was the people that were in her ear, right? Like uh -huh. you have to, you have to have a circle, um, that's intelligent, godly, whatever. Uh, and, you know, and, and all of those things, because if not, then they will project their fears on you. And some of them will even project their insecurities on you, even though that they're not necessarily living what it is that they want you to try to live out themselves. No, that's fair. So did that mean break up for you guys? So you leave. Oh, no, she dropped me. Right. Um, before before I left for the Navy, um, had a conversation. It wasn't cool. She got really insecure and was like, listen, you short. I like tall dudes this you know and you know just a bunch of things that were very surface level that obviously we can look past because once again we're in the double digits of marriage right so it's, it, it wasn't me being sure wasn't that big of an issue and it's not like she's talking to me either but um those were the things that she projected in order to for it to be the out that was her out clause oh wow so you guys broke up you leave the country done leave the country we do the um, right before Iraqi freedom. You know, I'm I'm in Japan. I come back, wine and dine, the whole deal, right? I blow a bunch of money. Yo, come with me. Bring the kid. We can figure this stuff out. We'll get y'all some passports. We can make it happen. And she was really intent on forcing a square peg into a round hole as far as the relationship goes. I got you. So all of this took place. Mm -hmm. How did you guys end up getting back together? So years later, she's divorced. I'm divorced. Her divorce. Hold up. Both of y'all went and got married. Yeah. I mean, so that's what I wanted. Right. I was raised in church. My thought was and we were always raised and I never saw it. So I wanted to be it. Right. A, a man in a home doing what he needs to do. Uh, God is the focus. Now, I wasn't I wasn't. Uh, like a preacher or anything like that. But, you know, I just had a decent foundation and I knew what I wanted to do. So you went and got married. I did. And how long were you married? I was married for five years, eight months. OK. And she got married. How long she was did. she married? Well, around. Uh, it wasn't that long. Right. So she ended up having three other kids by the same guy she had the first kid by. Oh, wow. After the fourth kid, she convinced him to marry her. And that's how they got together. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Now the issue, here, here's where the issue comes. The issue comes with, he was the last guy that her father approved of. So for her, her father was big in her life. Her father used to be a Marine. He ended up getting into some drug stuff and all the rest of that good stuff. And he dips, got to go, you know, whatever. So now dad is gone. She's forced to live with her mom and her mother's husband. Um, which, you know, highballermess.com. And this guy is the last dude that her father, who was on a pedestal, approved of. So she attempted to, that's what the square peg into the round hole is, right? Because daddy approved of him and I love daddy, then I'm going to attempt to make daddy happy, even though daddy's not here and daddy's not currently here to give me the blessing that says he's all right. Oh my God. That's crazy. Okay, so you get divorced. She gets divorced. Where do y'all get back together? Um, so I'm on vacation. Once again, I'm from Chicago. She's living in Chicago. The entire time that we are apart, I'm still connected, right? So her mom would call me. Her little sister would call me. When I came home, I would take her little sister to school, you know, buy her a McGriddle or something like that. And we would talk through life's issues and stuff like that because she didn't have at that moment, an older brother. So even though me and Angel split, the family kept me. Okay. So that happens often, though. 
you know when you cool it is so funny especially with i can relate to that because i do hair do you yeah. know how many of my exes man family still come and they be like girl don't you say nothing exactly especially if the guy has gone on to get married mm -hmm. oh man and i'm not trying to go to the cookout i but, get you right right but right. they come and i've been there and they we do we stay connected you build relationships with people i get it and that's what it was so i came home i was on vacation uh at this point i used to i was living in omaha nebraska uh her they were back they were still in chicago and her sister brought me up and from there it was for her it was like sparks flew and steve you still in contact with steve what happens with steve she gets an assumed name on facebook <laughs> writes me a four-page letter and they oh. close it with the kiss uh i mean that thing was long <laughs> and, it, and it was just a big, hey, I'm sorry. We probably, I probably shouldn't have did what I did. I'm bogus. I don't want it. This ain't an attempt to get back with you, but I just wanted to apologize and ask. I know and you felt like you were on cloud. Shante Thompson, right? Like she uh, assumed Shante Thompson was the name. Uh, she ain't even the Facebook page ain't even active no more. But yeah, did you know who it was from? Yeah, because she told me who she she, she said, said who she was. I got you. But you know, under the name that she she made. So were you like happy to hear from her? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so you were still gone over her. It I mean, was like it ain't good. You was, yeah, you was still into it. And I was, you know, I was I was toxic, right? Like I didn't have a man to show me what manhood was. So I'm out there trying to figure it out on my own. Okay. Um, and the first person that really had that spark for me is is now back, but now I have a battle. Dude, she did this to you. She did that to you. Are you a fool? You going back? You ain't going back. Nah, we ain't doing this. All right, cool. Accept your apology. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, she's an author. She's an author for a reason. Her way with words is ridiculous. So I will always say if we're ever at a conversation, if we're ever at dinner, if she ever comes with me, she trapped me. Like that's what it was. Like she 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 laid it out. She she put everything out there, and it was with words. It was wooing, if you will, uh, in order to bring me back into the conversation and get me invested. Okay. But that wasn't the case. I'm in Omaha. Sisters in Nebraska. Stuff happened abusively, and her husband took everything in the house and left. Only thing. So she didn't have a bed. Uh, oh, okay. so when she sent you this letter, she was still married. She was exiting the marriage. Yes. I got you. So she was coming out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. So when you say abuse took place, was that talking about it happened with her ex? Yes. Okay, got you. Right. So um, physical and verbal and emotional and financial, um, are all things are all different realms and levels of abuse that I believe deserve a conversation. But good grief! It, it yeah. And I think another portion of the conversation that we'd have to come back to on another day are wounds that come from your father, right? And how do you now decipher and judge what is good and what is not based upon what you've been told and what they've approved? Of? All right, so fast forward. But we're going to come back. We're coming back right. fast and fast now, forward. I'm trying to get to, so you guys are in contact. She sent you this letter. Yeah. What made y'all get back together? I'm, I'm getting there. No, get there. Gotcha. What happened? So How did y'all get back together? I'm in Chicago on vacation. I we ended up in contact. I came to the crib. It was it was terrible, and my heart broke. Like you know, her kids weren't the the I, the living standard and stuff. It just it wasn't right. He didn't leave her with the bed to sleep on or a dresser to put her clothes. In. Oh, so you came in like Superman? And I I came in like Superman. Uh, and your granddaddy, because I was cussing, <laughs> cussing and cleaning, cussing oh and sweeping. God. And how can you let yourself get here? Because she had goals and she had dreams. And the person that I fell in love with said that I'm going to be traveling with a suitcase and a pencil skirt. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. But I'm going to be all over the place. I'm going to have my own office. I have a suitcase and a pencil skirt and we're just going to be successful. And she had that with one child. So my childhood friend who I loved is now in this spot. And I'm ticked because you're here, but I love you enough to to help make this thing right. Wow. So that was the that was it. So you guys went forward from there. Everything progressed in a good way. Yes. So I went and, you know, went, bought her a bed, bought her a bunch of, you know, got the house taken care of. We got the bed done and then she kissed me and that was it. 
everything from 12 years ago is now right back in my face. And I'm like, oh my God, I feel it again. Get away wow. from me. This is terrible. And now I have to fight the, you're not who you used to be. You're not who I remember. You're not, you know, you're not, you're basically used for lack of a better term. When, when we were together, you weren't, you know, it, we were better and you had a plan and you, you knew where you were going. And the conversation of love and the lifestyle of love is what helped to restore her uh, from there to now a corporate woman who, you know, has a corporate credit card and flies on the corporate dime and, you know, all the rest of that good stuff. That's wonderful. So when we're talking about blended family, so you guys are established now. And did you have any children when you were married? Yes, I have two. OK, so you're com- you guys are coming together now. You have two children. Yep. Divorced. She has four children, right? Right. So you guys, okay, we coming together. And when you guys got married, were any of these kids over 18? Nah. Oh, so we got these young kids. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to guess with your two, they were living with their mom, right? Correct. And the, it's, it's important to say that there were two different women with children, right? So I have two boys, but the two boys have two different mothers. Okay. So got you. You know, Ooh, so I, we really in the blend. Oh, are we in the we blend are now? And so one all of the of brothers kids... and one of the sons had a brother, and that's where that possible comes from. Because sometimes he feels like a nut, and sometimes he don't. But we don't cast him out, or we don't push him away. Listen, we want you to be a part, but if you ain't feeling like it, you gonna come to the house and be staying. You stay over there somewhere, and we gonna be, and we're gonna live. So because you were playing, you know, you were actually a dad playing a dad role to him. Mm-hmm. You included him even after the divorce. Oh, absolutely. That was very kind of you. That says a lot about you. So, okay, we have six kids and a possible. Right. Coming together. Yes. So what did this look like? What was like the biggest challenge when you guys initially put everybody in the same house? When you guys came together, what do you recall being one of the hardest things to get through? Growing into a story that's already in progress. Um, where were we? I believe we were 13, twin nine-year-olds and an eight-year-old, right? So they they already have a system. They already have a thing. And I have a thing, right? Uh, I'm retired now, but at that time, I'd been in the Navy 10 years. I have a system. I have a regiment. This is how we do stuff. Um, but the process of having kids, why is this over here? Why, who broke this? Why is why is this not together? So really just melding together and adjusting expectations. Did the kids used to fight? No. They all got along. The the, the kids all got along. Now, with uh with the four that came with Angel, they had their own relationship where they would wrestle, they would, you know, do whatever. It was it was a thing. One of my twin the twin son he was the smallest at the time. So they would pick on him and this, that, and the other. Now he's one of the biggest ones and you know he, he gets his retaliation back. But that was their thing. They would re- wrestle, they would fight, but Angel kept them close together. When we would have nights out and we would take them to a hotel and go get in the pool, everybody would compliment them. They play so well together. That's all they had. It was them against the world. Yeah, but how did it look when your kids came? So when our kids came, it was... It was very easy. And the reason that it was easy is because of Angel. Angel is the secret weapon, right? So she prepared the kids and let them know, hey, they're coming. We have to bring them in. They're coming. We can't treat them like outsiders. Hey, their dad is the reason why we're all here. You can't. Let's let's make this happen. So whatever it is that she did to and with them uh, made it so that when they came, they worked on acceptance. They worked on bringing everybody in. Uh, if you own a weed, then we own a weed. Let's 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 play together. So do you I'm you know, from what you're saying, it sounds to me like the parents have a major role in setting tones for when families are blended. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? And sometimes that's not the case because your story is very rare. You know what I mean? Kids are in it fighting over attention like this. My father. I it don't is. did your kids like her? Uh, yes, everybody likes her. They like her more than me sometimes. Okay. Which is crazy. Like I can call, I can call her, and I can put them on the phone. Like, oh my God, Miss Angel, am I chopped liver? What are and we? did her kids like you? Uh, probably not. 
Okay, let's talk about that. Yeah, because so when I came into the relationship, I didn't come in. There was more sergeant than there he was. He said probably not. Uh, I mean, probably not. No, because there was there was more discipline. There was more rules. There were more standards. There was more. Uh uh-uh, oh, no, we're not doing that. No, what are you? What are you doing? Why are you on, upside down on the couch? You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But I didn't know how to insert love with them, if that makes sense, right? Okay. Love requires discipline. Discipline requires love. If discipline does not have love, then it's abuse. Okay. Um, And I didn't know, I didn't know the difference. One of the things that Angel and the kids have done and helped me grow into and mature into is it's not showing on your page. It's not? That's, That's the text I got. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So one of the things Thank you. that helped that they've helped me do is to grow and understand what love is and then how to communicate love into a family dynamic. So ultimately, they were my practice kids until my until I started getting custody. Um, and then I was able to do it better. OK, that is so. Oh, see, and that's how it normally goes. You know, when women bring a man into the house, you know, and their kids aren't used to this new thing. If you come in there talking about what you are putting into place, people don't want to hear that. No. And people really don't want to hear. There you go. Thank you for that. That's, Pleasure. That's both volumes. So people don't want to hear that. A lot of times, you know, the man comes in and they looking at you like you this bad guy. Mom, we hate him. And a lot of times the mothers let the kids run the show. Right. You understand kids, oh, really, especially women and their sons, they can really manipulate what the mother does and how she moves. Like, did you ever have that situation? No, actually, we didn't. Right. Uh, our kids ended up being some of the biggest help to us than than anything else. Uh, our oldest daughter is Christina. Right now, she's 24. If I got it wrong, it's OK. Uh, she's 23, 24. At the time, she was 13 or 14. Something happened between me and mama and we wasn't gelling. And apparently she said that she was going to get these kids and she was about to go. Well, our 13 year old was like, "Uh uh-uh, you didn't drag us all the way across the country. Have us leave our friends and do all the rest of this good stuff for you to up and leave. You need to go upstairs and fix it. Uh, This is coming from a 13 year old. So when we we have a standard of accountability in the house that if we can say it, then we can then. If we can do it, you can do it. If we can hold you accountable, you can hold us accountable. So at that point, it was we had a moment and one of the people that we taught came back to us and said, "Uh, uh-uh, you got to go upstairs and fix it. And I can't tell you what it was over. I can't tell you all none of that stuff. What I can tell you is that we fixed it. OK, now question. Okay, so this is where things start to get messy a lot of times. Yeah. When you have two women and you're dealing with these children, so you're now remarried. How did that news sit with your ex-wife when she heard y'all were getting married? Oh, it was, so I don't know how they felt, <laughs> but once again, my secret weapon is Angel. She went to them. And said, listen, she went to the baby mother and she went, the ex-wife. She went to both of them and said, I'm not trying to replace you. But when your kids are in my house, I'm going to treat them like they're mine. I'm going to love them. They get out of line. I'm going to check them. I'm going to send them back home to you as good or either better than what they was when they came here. I don't need we, we ain't. That's it. No drama. No nothing. We don't really do drama. But since they're going to be around me, I guess we need to get to know each other. And they would you no know, go off and have girl time or, or go do whatever. And that's weird that, you know, your ex-wife and your current wife are on the patio having wine. But that's how they they came together and made their own relationship. But you know what? That's not bad. It's you not. know, a lot of times, though, you don't even have that option because most of the time the ex-wife or the baby mother is so bitter. Yeah. She don't want to do nothing but send emails or I'm going to tell you this, I've seen this a million times. I have friends that go through this. The mothers refuse to talk to the new wife at all. Yeah. And that's crazy to me. You know, but how 
<sighs> so the the deal is if you don't heal what hurts you, you will bleed on those who didn't cut you. Right? The the new wife had nothing to do with the old relationship. It's not like um I wasn't divorced and I was sleeping with Angel behind her back and all the rest of this good stuff. No. When we finished, we finished. Uh, and years later, me and Angel got together. So when she came and extended the olive branch, that's what it was. It was another woman humbling herself to a woman that she didn't know, but she loved me enough to build a bridge before I had an opportunity to say anything or do anything. She went out on her own and did it. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you, thus far, this just sounds like a perfect story. You telling me y'all didn't have any issues? Oh, absolutely we did. Well, help me. Um, I want to know about the issues and the challenges y'all had because that's why my viewers watch this. Right. They are trying to work through things. A lot of people that will watch this show are trying to navigate and figure out how to work through blended families. Yeah. They don't need to know what's right. They need to know the challenges that you went through so that okay. they can maybe relate to those. Right. OK. So one of my challenges, one of the challenges was me. Right. I told you I had an expectation. There was 2000 something. I had I was overseas, did a deployment. Um, I came back home. Furniture that I had flew from overseas. This was like an Italian leather living room set and all the rest of that good stuff. Destroyed. What you like, mean destroyed? I mean destroyed. Like leather ripped. <laughs> I came in the house, just got back, fresh off the airport, probably still smell like being over there. And the first thing I did was took that, took it, threw it into the backyard. Hot. Oh my God. So you came in the house and off the break when you saw it. When, when I saw it, I'm red. I, I see red. I don't know. Uh me and Angel get in the car to go buy some more furniture. I live it at this point because for me, this is what I have to show for what I've done. Right. I didn't know how to separate who I am and what I've done. So what was her response? You come in oh. and you trip out. I mean, like, did you go hard? Like, did everybody no. in the house get quiet? D yes. <laughs> <laughs> they did because what what do you do when somebody picks up the couch takes it into the backyard throws it over the balcony and then walks out the house like what do you do yeah I'm a, hey I'm i ain't seen you I'm i ain't seen you in nine months and you come back with these bags and an attitude and they are just being children so angel had to school me while we financing this furniture uh that this is what kids do it's all, it, like why uh oh now, you know, people, everybody is not going to agree with that, though. And I didn't. At yeah. the time, I didn't. I'm hot. I'm no. fussing and all the rest of it. You can't stuff. tear my damn furniture up. Not at That's all. That's not what kids do. Right. And we don't. We didn't have the furniture with the plastic on it, right? Like, this wasn't, I didn't have a room in the house that was a museum. You know, like like Big Mom in the house where you they go They had in. somewhere to play. Uh-huh. The, the house was theirs. One of the things that we didn't establish was that boundary where, okay, cool. This is where you play. This is where we, you know, you stay Woo! out of and protect or whatever. Now, now we get into the good stuff. Oh, absolutely. A um, lot of couples go through that. Yeah. A lot of couples. And Donovan, let me give some shout outs here. Thank you guys for tuning in. I see Tiara, Larry, Donovan is all over the comments already <laughs> talking about what's up, my guy. Blah, blah, blah. But you guys don't hesitate to drop your questions. You know, I check into them. Yeah. But that's that's the thing, getting on one page, man. And when you talk about raising children, yeah. and y'all, that's not a few. So how often were your two children um, and your possible coming? It depends, right? When I was uh, when I was overseas, once again, Angel is my secret weapon. I I can't tout her enough. She would drive because I have one in Leesburg, Virginia, and at the time, one was in Leesburg. He's now in our custody. The other one was in Binghamton, New York, five, six hour drive away. While I'm away, Angel would every other weekend rotate and go get one and go get the other. Oh, she's the real MVP. Oh, absolutely. She had a, she had a job and, you know, it was very laborious and all the rest of that good stuff. And she would get off work, drive through the, the mountains of Pennsylvania to go get this boy Drink, get her a Red Bull, bring her back down so that they can be a part of the family and they can feel and grow together. And she did all of this while I wasn't even here. That's excellent. Yeah. yeah. And this wasn't an ask or anything like that. Her perception of family and her perception of us wanting to be together. 
Angel was the superstar and making making the connections and making the things happen. Okay. Calling the ex-wives and be like, yo, meet me halfway. Meet me. Ha can you meet me here? Oh, you can't meet me here. I'm going to do it this time. But next time I'm going to need you to, you know, I work like you work. And however she did it, uh, a lot of caffeine, you know, we were doing Red Bulls in five hours, but she would she would hit it and get it and get them together. So she would make sure that everyone got a chance to be together and it wasn't strangers. OK, so that's one challenge I went through getting every just learning how to deal with the kids. Yeah. And you just kind of becoming more patient. Absolutely. So it was like a balance on kind of putting a little more discipline in there and you kind of being a little more understanding with kids being kids. Is yeah, that right? Absolutely. Learning okay. how to parent through love. Uh, another challenge that we went through was I didn't know until later that my wife wasn't good with finances. Uh oh. I get to, before I left. So we had a, we had a lot of things going on, right? We Ooh, a lot of you stuff. Know you're going, you we had some, some like fam that. come in, uh, and they were staying with us for a little while. And right after we agreed for them to come with us, I got deployed. Right? It was a su surprise, short notice. You got sixty days, and then you're going to Africa. All right, cool. Here you go. I assumed that you knew what you were doing. So she got the password, she got the accounts, she got the bank and stuff. Oh, Leave I me know a little she money was to like, play. Yay. Uh, <laughs> she was like, how the hell you do this? And she, but she couldn't, she did not tell me. One of the things that Angel wanted to do was make sure that I wasn't out there stressing, stressing about home while I'm deployed trying to get some work done, right? So she wouldn't say, hey, uh, th this ain't right or whatever. Uh, well, actually, she did. There are one or two times where I lost patience because I felt like I'm deployed and I don't have any money. Like I get a little extra money for being out here and I'm in Italy and I want to, you know, go get go out and get a couple of get something to eat, do something, uh, do a tour or something like that. All my money's going back home. What are we doing? I got a job. You got a job. She didn't give me the the story of, hey, I don't know how to balance the checkbook. So she had a way of doing things that got us into some trouble. Uh, and I came back and we was red uh -oh. in, in a couple of areas. And it, it wasn't it wasn't cute. And and that was a point of friction. So how did that work? Like when you came back and money was looking funny, like what was did you throw something over the balcony again? Oh no, it, it wasn't <laughs> that. Um but so the hardest thing in the world for me is to see my wife cry. And Sincerely, she's just like, I didn't know how to do it. What am I supposed to say? If I love you, then we together can find a way through this. Okay. And we did, right? We had a, uh, we had a caddy. The caddy got repossessed. It's a car. Hold up. Now we're talking. To, you really letting it out now. Yeah. So you go away and you had a cad Cadillac. Cadillac SRX4. And you came back and it got repo. And it got repo because oh, we were behind. Lord. Uh, and her her and she didn't say anything while you was gone? No, because she for her, that was a level of stress. And she didn't want to add stress to me while I was out already stressing with the 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 work of things. Lord. And her her mentality, and I can say it now because we're better now. Uh her mentality was she pay on the bill and not pay the bill. Because she didn't see, you know, money is going to come in twice a month. My money coming in twice a month. Your money coming in twice a month. So you take this, you pay it out. You, this gets the beginning of the month. That gets the end of the month. Do what you need to do with groceries, all the rest of that good stuff. She didn't, her, ment her mentality and philosophy wasn't like that. So because she paid on and she got overwhelmed, we ended up in the red. Finance is the number one reason for, for divorce. How did that work for you, though? Like, can you remember what your immediate response was? Was you like, I'll talk to you tomorrow or I need some time or like, was you cussing? Was you what? I mean, I was probably cussing. Like, I, I don't because I don't know. I can't tell you immediately what what 10 years ago or nine. No, years I get ago it. But, you know, was but you I mad? know. Oh, absolutely. Uh, very, very hot. And did some financial counseling, uh, got everything back on track, put together a plan that said that this is what you're going to need to do 
in order to get your stuff in order to get your stuff together you know because sometimes look People don't always, you know, people aren't always able to work through that. And I commend your wife for agreeing that she had made an error. Yeah. A lot of women will mess money up and not admit it. Like they will stand on being right. And I think that's what kind of takes you down to the ground. Yeah. You know, but a portion of that is my fault. Let me let me also place responsibility on me. One, because I never like she never asked age. I never asked how you how you work your bills. Right. We never had a credit score talk. Yeah. We didn't we didn't have the um, until later. Right. So now I got 60 days to go. I'm thinking about training. You got to do your weapon stuff. You got to X, Y and Z. And hey, let me let me give you these passwords and he go, you know, he go the accounts. I, I'm out like I didn't I didn't think to one avail her to the resources that she had like on the basis or you know go to church and you know find somebody that's good with finances and work it out i didn't think about that i could have um i didn't think to allow her to start paying bills before i left so that i can see how things were going and make adjustments i didn't think about that literally i had to go i dumped i dumped what i needed to on her and i dumped you had the house because I was doing it before. You got it. Tag. I'm out. So some of that she is not to blame on, on the entire thing. Okay. So I will say this. Now, you know, I always like to talk about hot topics and, you know, <laughs> things that are relevant. And I cannot let this show go by without <laughs> talking about Will and Jada. Okay. So when you talked about, you know, you don't like to see your wife cry. You said that really hurts you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So have you seen the video about Will and Jada? I did. I know y'all have seen it. I, everybody is talking about it. I saw it before I got out of my bed this morning. And when I saw that, I thought it was a joke. I just didn't believe that Will Smith had slapped somebody. I mean, I, I mean, I, first of all, I don't even see Will like that. I can't even imagine him like just being that type of aggressor. Right. So look, right. When you talk about, you know, not wanting to see your wife cry. Will you see Will in the video? I wish we had the, the power to like play that now. But OK, if you guys haven't seen the video, you got to look at it. I'm sure most of you guys have. But Will is sitting with Jada. Mm-hmm. OK. Chris Rock makes this crazy joke calls her G.I. Jane 2. He said, I can't wait to see G.I. Jane 2. So, you know, did you see G.I. Jane 1? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, you know, that really, to me, it wasn't that funny either. But Will Smith initially laughed. If you look at the camera, uh-huh. he initially was just joking. You know, I don't know if he really thought it was funny or, you know, he was on this new platform because I don't know if you know, but Will received one of the I mean, biggest accomplishments of his life Okay. last night. That was a major accomplishment for a black man. Yeah. So it's like you're hot. I mean, oh, my God. Well, I mean, it wasn't that. I think uh, to put me in the position, number one, a husband is a defender, right? I don't like to see my wife cry. Uh, I don't like anything against my wife. That's it. I am... I am her Advil. I am her aspirin. I am her Motrin. Right? You, she won't. She don't get a headache if I'm not, and I won't attend to it. And she does the exact same for me. So mutually, we take care of each other. But the husband is the defender. So if you look at it, Jada has an issue with alopecia that has caused her hair to grow to fall out. She's been dealing with that for a while. Chris Rock had already made a joke years before about Jada. That wasn't taken, wasn't taken all that well as well. So what do you do as a man when your wife is offended and you're in the moment where you have someone who could potentially be a repeat offender um, now making a public show of your wife? Yeah, because first of all, like I said, what stood out to me was that Will thought it was funny. Will was like he I mean, but it could have been a chuckle because sometimes as as a man who gets upset, I, I I get mad, right? Sometimes your initial reaction is, oh no, this, you know, and that's a it's a you laugh in in order but to you figure don't think out it's your, funny. exactly because that's the uh, your brain is processing 
responses and what to do. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you, whatever Will was doing with that laugh at, he looked over at Jada and Jada like rolled her eyes. It was, a, it, she did not try to disguise her face at all. She like rolled her eyes and it was a very serious look that came over her. And it's like, Will did not hesitate. He immediately got up and walked to that stage when he looked at his wife. But what woman, what man doesn't defend his woman? Yeah. And then let me say this. First of all, I'm team Will. So I agree with his actions. Yeah. Let me say that. I'm definitely not opposing what he did. I feel like Chris Rock should have got his face slapped. Now, with that being said, we got that all cleared up. Yeah. But I feel like there was some hurt there, too. Right. Like I I said earlier, if you don't heal what hurts you, you'll bleed on those who didn't cut you. There was possibly some tension and things before the show started. Uh, Consider a wife being insecure. I don't have my hair. I don't know if I want to go to this show. I don't know if I should be here. Maybe you should go by yourself and your husband consoling her and saying, come on, everything's going to be, everything's going to be all right. Don't you worry about it, girl. They love you. You know, Will Smith and now, after I have talked her off the ledge, if you will, if not, after you've been talked out of your insecurities, after you've been made to, uh, convinced to come, now you're sitting down and now somebody does the very thing that you thought that they were going to do that I told you that they weren't. Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. What do you do? So um, there, there's hurt and there's pain. And that was an expression of of all of it. This is a it's a wild situation and I can recall like you know I'm black. I'm a black woman, but my hair is just as blonde as it want to be and I'm light bright. So I can recall being whenever I go to a comedy show, it never feels normally if I'm with a guy he done bought the best seats in the house or some close to it and right. it never fails. If it's a black comedian, they always make a white girl joke about me. It is rare that I go to the show and they don't get up in there and make some kind of joke about me. But I'm not going to lie. I compared those two things. Even though it will make me feel a little weird sometimes, I've even asked guys to buy tickets closer to the back so that I wouldn't even get that kind of attention. You know what right. I'm saying? I'll have to deal with that. But it is interesting to see how a man responds. And that's always been a telltale for me for how I will go forward with a guy. Because when you're in those kind of spaces, yeah, uh, he like I've been with guys that didn't even consider my feelings in that situation. He's so busy laughing his ass off. Mm-hmm. I mean, he laughing so hard. He not even looking at me. And sometimes I didn't take it well. Right. I'm going to be straight. Mm-hmm. So I just understood that. And I felt like. Will and Jada were connected right there. Yeah. I feel like a good marriage, a successful marriage is a connection. Absolutely. And I feel like, you know, you feel like you probably feel if your wife is hurt, it affects you. Absolutely. And that's the way it should be. Do you know how special that is? Like, congratulations. I got to congratulate you because it's so many marriages that's not like that. And it's so many women that don't have that space. They don't have that option with their husband. Right. He just not emotionally available. She literally have to. I've seen women about to go through things like surgeries or going through a tough time, like mm-hmm. losing a family member or something. And she will have to literally call in her sisters and them because he wasn't even available for her. Yeah. And that's sad. But it also speaks to the lack of community. One of the things that I believe that makes our marriage successful is that we have surrounded ourselves with other successful married couples those who are older and then some who are younger. The younger, we can we can talk to them and be like, all right, cool. This uh, young sex is fun and all the rest of that good stuff. But when you got kids, you need to do what you need to do. Listen, you make your schedule, make sure you get your time in. But it ain't going <laughs> to be like it ain't going to be like it used to. Yeah. But we had older couples to kind of help us in that in that aspect, in that regard. So for me and for Angel, we got five couples that we can call if somebody's tripping. And, hey, come on, we need to get this together. And that's community. When you don't, when I am not right and I am not well, she got the information of my brothers. And she can go to my brothers like, hey, can y'all see what up with him? I I can't get to him. He's not this or he's not that. And that's one of the things that an attentive woman does. And she is extremely, I told her she should work for the CIA. She is that attentive uh, to the inflections of your voice or you're walking with a limp. What's wrong with you? And, and all of those things. 
Uh, and I, in turn, attempt to return what she gives back to me in the level of attention and affection. Man, that is that is so, so good. And, you know, like just really, it was just so crazy to me. I was like, when I thought about what the show was about tonight and I saw that Will and Jada situation, I said, perfect. <laughs> I said perfect because it is true. It's relevant. Will and Jada have been dominating the TV for the last couple of years. Yeah. Like it's been a lot going on. And you know something else that I thought about? What's up? You know, Will always had like an insecurity when it came to Pac. When it came to Tupac, you know, Pac had this save it, I'm going to protect you type of vibe naturally. Mm -hmm. Like if a woman was standing beside Tupac, she automatically going to feel like, you know, she's like safe. I'm going to guess that. I know him and Jada had that thing going on. Yeah. So, you know, in my mind, this was like a chance for Will to like be a hero in front of the world. In front of the world. But it also sends a message that I don't want my wife played with. I do not that's, want my wife played with. That's it. That she ain't a toy. And Did you see what he said from the audience? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I can't even repeat, but he was like, when he said it he two times. He that bird man, put some respect on the name. Woo! He ain't going to say it no more. I mean, and it was crazy because that was like after the slap. You see what I'm saying? He was still going hard at it. So it was just, I don't know. It was just real crazy to me. It really was. And do you see how many people is mad about it? It's uh, people saying that Will shouldn't have did that. Right. But they're not coming from the perspective of a protective husband over his wife so everyone has the ability to see from their vantage point right you you see from where you are and some people don't know a husband that will protect them some people are in a relationship where their husband leaves you vulnerable and you got to call on your girls and your girls are gonna come through your girls gonna make it happen oh my god I just thought about that. I mean, I really gave it a lot of thought. When I saw that situation this morning, I kind of meditated on it as I moved around today mm -hmm. and just thinking about your story. I just, I cannot, I don't know that Will should have went and slapped the man, but I can't say that he shouldn't have. I right. feel like that it really exuded love for me. That's what I saw. It's like he couldn't help himself. Yeah. Yeah. So consequences are neutral. They're not good or bad. It's just based upon the action that precedes it. So I can't tell, I can't say what consequence he should have had for putting that dude's wife name in his mouth. If you if you are the kind of guy that protects and defends your wife, then that's that's what it is that you do. Yeah, because my question is, what would the world have said if Will just sat there and let that dude say that? And I'm going to tell you, if Jada's face wouldn't have looked like it looked, I guarantee Chris would have went deeper with that joke. I mean, he might have. I think that was about to really go far. And I just, it's just one of those things. And I'm not gonna lie, I just love what Will did. Yeah. For me, I really liked it. If I was his wife, we would have had a great night that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but in the realm of relationship, it doesn't matter what the world says, right? What matters is me and you, right? And as long as I am doing for you what it is that you need and I'm fulfilling what you are and you do one for me, the world can say whatever they want. Will and Jade are going to be Will and Jade. Yeah. Whether they commentate, whether they don't commentate is. That's them. Is It's them. Yeah. And, you know, when you're talking about, you wait, know. Wait, 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 wait. Just thought about something. Okay. Something else that he did was he also showed his children the protection of their mother. Right. If you you we have to talk about the layers of the conversation. Yeah, Jada felt some kind of way, but what about Willow? And what about whatever his son's name is? Uh Jaden? Jaden. Right. Uh what about them? You if you allow your mother to be attacked in public on national television and you don't defend her, then what does this say about him to them? That's real. I Absolutely. didn't even think about that. It, it doesn't. So typically. Girls marry an image of their father, right? Um, so if your father's a protector and you are showing to be a protector, then uh, maybe Willow ain't going for the punk. Yep. So uh, all of the things are in play. We can't just see it from surface or face value. No, that's good. That's That was a really good point that you just made. He did. He probably considered his children. My children are watching. And what would that have been like? They would have been like, Dad. What's the conversation when you get home? What's the conversation when you get home? 
and they're old enough now to where they can have their own opinions. Man, they probably went home and, and went out and celebrated and everything. They probably were like, yeah, dad. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it could have been, but I just hate to see what the other side would have looked like, right? Let's say there's family tension. We don't know what's happening in the house. We don't know how him and Willow and how him and Jaden are, are doing uh, over over anything. But you allow your, you see your mother who you love, your every kid loves their mom. If you got a great mom, every kid loves their mom. So now you see the love of your life, your mother, the one that nourished you and, and is the nurturer of the relationship now being attacked and your father who's the protector, not protecting. And look, this, the oh, y'all, look. Did y'all hit, now I am a Steve Harvey fanatic. Like mm -hmm. I'm always team Steve. I love Steve Harvey. When I heard Steve's perspective on it today, I was really shocked. I I really, I'm gonna tell you if y'all didn't hear what Steve Harvey said about it, Steve gonna be the came and attack me. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but Steve Harvey was so upset at Will's behavior. I mean, he lost it. He was like, This is all we needed. He was like, Most blacks, you know, we're not invited to the Oscars. And he was like, This year, not only were we invited to the Oscars, but we'll won an Oscar. And we had a black man, you know, hosting the Oscars. And he said, Now we give them what they want. So now they just going to say, Look at these niggas. And I came up in here acting like niggas. And I just wonder what would have happened if somebody said something about Marjorie if she was in this position. Yeah, I mean, no, that tells you what he would have done. Uh -oh. the, the ultimate thing is sometimes we don't have to play at their table. We can go make our own. There's enough black millionaires and billionaires, especially in the film industry, where we can create our own awards and give ourselves value. But an Oscar is, is a validation from a group of people that said that you did a thing. But does your validation really matter when you have it already? Yeah, and then you right. You know, you just said a mouthful. He just told what, what he would have done, and Absolutely. he would have been more worried about, about his image, about, about his the image, and not the way his wife feels. What will the culture do, and all the rest of the? I'm not married to the culture. I'm married to my wife. Man, do you know? Do you know? You you know your wife got something. You know that she has something. You know, I have never been married, but I have dated, you know, mm -hmm. I would say some very powerful men that I consider very intelligent as well that do not have that. And that is part of the reason why I'm not married. Okay. I will not have I, I'm not going to get married if it's not that. Right. A man should be because if you're not ready to put your wife and your the feelings first or put your husband and his feelings and things like that first, man, it's not going to work. Absolutely. It's really not. And it can. Ugh, that just goes down bad. It does. Uh, some of it stems, though, from definition. Right. Uh, your ability to define will determine your capability to fulfill. So if you can't define what it is, then you then you are inevitably going to fail at trying to be what you said you wanted to be. Uh, so if you can't define what husband is and if we can't get to the root of what that is, then inevitably when it's time for a husband to perform, then we're going to fall short because we can't we can't define it. Um, yeah, I'll stop there. No, nah, that was good. But like I said, this with the blended family thing, just getting back to our topic, you know, with the blended family situation, that is very hard, you know, and just to hear about how you guys brought it together and are successful. How many years have you guys been married now? Ten. OK. And, you know, that it's just still. That's just really good. I have learned a lot, you know what I mean, from just hearing your story. But it just sounds like she is the all-star. You know, she just went above and beyond, but so did you. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's what it takes, right? If you are willing to put yourself aside in order to grow and learn and become, because we hit each other's, we hit each other's spots. It wasn't um a great moment when we find out that she didn't know how to handle money or the way that she handled money wasn't the best way for us to, you know, keep our credit score and, and to keep our stuff. That wasn't the best moment. But if I was an agitator and if I didn't choose to love through that moment, then I could have attacked. Right. And that's what some people do. They see a weakness in you. And instead of loving you through the weakness, they now belittle you and, and make you feel stupid. And now I don't want to no longer be with someone who doesn't um, 
envelop love and, and use love through me. Now, question. Talk to me. Do you feel like you are supposed to love through anything? Like, what if somebody's weakness is the opposite sex and they are moving around on that note? Do you think that a woman should be trying to love a man through him being with other women? Um, I do not. Okay. So there's a level of discipline that both parties have to have. You understand what I'm saying? It's, deal, oh, it's, it's certain things it, that it, it, there, there are I'm certain, willing to love you. There, there are certain things that are deal breakers. But I also believe that if you eat at home, when you pass the restaurant, then you ain't going to be hungry. Um, That's not true. It, some people are greedy. Some yeah. people are eating at home and eating at the restaurants and eating at the beach. And oh, absolutely. Home. And that's how it's, that's how you know that it's time to go. Typically, there are telltale signs in the beginning that that's that that would be the case. And our rose colored glasses kind of puts us in a position where, oh, we look past that little thing because I love because he does this for me or because she makes me feel. this, Yes. Way, or because she does this specific thing that I've never had done like that before. Yeah. You know, um, typically, and let's let's kind of get into it a little bit. If you get into sex before marriage, uh, that typically becomes a blinder. Right now, I can't see you for you because I'm seeing you through the lens of uh, sexual whatever. Absolutely. So if you pay attention in the beginning, it'll tell you it'll tell you who they are. Right. There is a term that we have created in our black culture called cheating. Right. Where you cheated. And it's not necessarily that is someone who had a commitment issue or someone who had an integrity issue. Right. If you lie on you, if you lie to your cousin, you might lie to me. You better say so. If you lie on your taxes, you might lie to me. You better say so. so. But when you see it, and, mm -hmm. oh well, well it was gonna give me Woo! an extra two grand, so I just wanted to get this extra two grand. Oh my no, god! No, why you not know, be honest up front? What you just said, the way you explained that, it was so it. You know, and I always just speak from my own experiences, but I have dated guys and they seemed like they were so good and we'll be talking about something to him. Be like, don't worry about that. You know, we could just do this. Flag. And I'll be, be in my mind, I would start getting angry because I'd be like, why would you do that? Instead of just saying to myself, that's who he is. Mm -hmm. That's a, He's letting you know what kind of man he is. Absolutely. The reason why he's not bothered by that. He's not bothered by his best friend having multiple men because it's nothing wrong with it to him. Exactly. He's not bothered having all these single friends and he's married because there's nothing wrong with that to him. Right. And or she doesn't. That we, uh, I'm teaching my kids how to drive now. So this is this is very I think this is going to be good. I teach them that where your eyes go, your hands are going to follow and eventually the car is going to drift in that direction. So if you're looking straight ahead, typically the car is going to go straight ahead. But the longer your gaze goes over here, typically the car is going to go there. The same thing happens in relationships. When your eyes are on your spouse, you can drive towards your spouse. Man. When you start looking at the other places and you want to be at the players club or, you know, you the latest twerk team video or, or whatever it is. If you allow it to take your attention, then it will take your attraction. And if it takes your attraction, then it'll take you. I'm telling you, man, that is so good. You know, I talked to a lot of guys. I was, and what I was just referencing, you know, I was talking to a young man today, you know, and he was just talking about a whole bunch of craziness with a lady he's going through. And that, it's just so interesting to me how you just worded that. I'm going to go back and I'm going to record that. The way you put that together was so good, you know, and I really like the piece where you said some people have integrity issues. Absolutely. And if people are not integral, you know, outside of you, they are definitely not going to grow wings and fly to it when right. y'all get together. There's not going to be a, a switch that flips that all of a sudden this happens. People show you who they are in the moments of time that we spend with them. We have to pay attention in the beginning so that Ooh. we know what we're getting into. Oh, my goodness. But once you're together, one of your biggest advocates is prayer, right? I can't change the will of a person, but I know a God that is able to do more than I can ask or think. So when I come and I cover my wife and I cover her insecurities, he puts her in situations where she's forced to grow. And now we are the better because I have done that. Or when she does it for me, we can't exclude. We, we can talk about the bad. If you get to the good, right, there can be good salvage from bad. Do you know how many women 
going through hell and they go to that guy and they say, are you praying for me? And he can't even open his mouth and say yes. That's his heart. Right. But you and have it's to, not his fault. You got to see where he is. You right? know what I mean? But that's a that's a prerequisite. I couldn't. I married a woman with four kids. But if she did not have a honor or a value system for the Lord and for the Bible, it wouldn't make sense. If you can't value, if you don't value God, there's no way you're going to value me. Man, look, you know, I can't believe it's eight o'clock, you guys, already. And, you know, we going <laughs> at it, going into it, you know, just to close out. I'm going to leave y'all with that. Prayer keeps things together. Prayer is what keeps that family together. And I can't thank you enough for coming on. That hour flew by. I mean, I was all into it. I just was like, oh, my goodness. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. And, um. I mean, where can people buy your book? All right. So Amazon.com. Quickly. Love endures all. That's it. Make love choices is what the conversation that we want to do. Okay. And I'll drop that in the comments for you guys, too. I'll see you guys next week, Monday at 7 for another episode of Let's Talk With Road. Next week's episode is going to be on human trafficking. Make sure you catch that.